Pete, we've just seen the mural outside. Um, how does it feel to have, I guess, the women's AFLW team represented in Hotel Brighton? Yeah, when you walk past, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? The, the red just grabs you and, and stands out. But um, I guess for this area, you know, take it back, I guess, myself as a child, I, I grew up at Brighton Golf Course in a little commission house. So uh, if I was a little kid walking down the street and, you know, could see a female player represented on one of the iconic places and somewhere that I lived, I'd just look at it and go, yeah, that's what I want to be. So growing up here, was there a large representation of, I guess, men's AFL football? And is it completely changed now to have the women standing up somewhere? Yeah, well, all we knew was the men's footy. You know, we used to walk down to Moorabbin or if we drove, we, you know, parked in someone's backyard and they charged us $5, you know, to park in their backyard. But that's all we knew. You know, Nathan Burke was my favourite player. I watched Nicky Winmar and Tony Lockett, etc. So you didn't think about women's footy because you didn't see it. So you didn't know any better. So um, the fact that now it's, it's a reality and, and it can, you know, really be about not just footy but about other things, like girls can do what girls want to do. So did you see the men running around and think one day I want to do this or was it something that was just like, oh, that's so far away, I'm, I'm really looking forward, like looking up to the men but probably not a reality for me? Oh, there was a moment when I thought I could do it and then I realised that I was a female <laughs> and reality sat in and, uh, and then, yeah, you just, I guess, look for other sports or look to other avenues. So, um, no, it's pretty, it's, it's a really great feeling to be able to bring footy back to Moorabbin uh, in a home and away series and, and to do it through the power and courage of females is exciting. And when, when you started playing yourself, how old were you? And were you one of the first to play at your particular club um, in yeah. a female team? Yes, so I played under nines for Morty Alec Brayside, which is actually Matt Finnis's club as well. I think he might have been a year older than me, but um, yeah, I played one year there and I had to nag my dad and then dad had to go to the board and they had to give permission and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we did that and then, you know, mum and dad separate and. I moved to the country, so uh, no more footy after that until I found out when I was about 20 that there was a women's league, so then I started yeah. playing then. Yeah, and then obviously you played for, was it over 10 years you were playing and then yeah. decided to transition into the coaching side of things. Yeah. Was that something that you'd imagined or it kind of just happened because you needed a coach or you saw it as another way to sort of stay in footy? Yeah, I always saw myself as a coach. Uh, I guess the last couple of years of playing, I was virtually doing that. I was virtually an on-field coach. And the, the real moment for me was, you know, as a phys ed teacher or a sports teacher and you take groups out, um, I took a hockey team out. It was, I think it was uh, year eight hockey girls. And there was this girl that wasn't very good at hockey, but she was giving it a crack and you got to play a sport. So um, I just told her where to stand. I said, just stand on the post here and the ball will ricochet off the goalies, the pads at some stage, and then you all have to was pop it back in and you'll score yourself a goal. And um, she stood there for the whole game <laughs> and it happened, it ricocheted off the goalies' pads and she popped it in and scored a goal. And I was still playing footy then and I was playing at high levels and I just remember the feeling that I had for her achievement was greater than any feeling that I was having for myself playing the game yeah. um, because I'd played it probably for so long. So. It was at that moment that I knew that I really wanted to coach. I was playing down at uh, Darabin and the coach down there um, wasn't allowed to coach the following year. So the, the president uh, asked me to, you know, whether I'd coach the next year because the last game I'd done my knee, so I was clearly never going to play again. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, I don't want to coach. Like I do want to coach, but not Darabin and not, you know, I don't want to coach club that I was playing for because uh, I was a bit of a rat bag and who's going to take me serious and to be honest the club wasn't a great club at that stage, culturally it was quite poor and wasn't a club that I could see myself at whereas I really wanted to coach, coach um, Deacon but look after a few, few conversations and a lot of persuasion I said yeah okay I'll, I'll do it and uh, yeah I never looked back since really. Yeah we ended up coaching five premierships at Darabin is that correct? Yeah yeah so we went to um, bottom of the ladder to um, playing in the grand final in the first year and yeah. people talk about the five premierships but 
the people that were actually involved in the club really remember that year because it was that year where they just where the belief came that they were a good side. And then you ended up at St Kilda. How how did you end up at St Kilda and also being a female coach in a men's um, football program? What was yeah. that like? Yeah, look, uh, ending up at St Kilda wasn't just something that happened overnight. Um, it was just, it was just, you know a part of a long journey of experiences and I guess knowing what to do and knowing what not to do when things don't go your way. Um, you know, I learnt very early in life that, you know, things don't go your way and you can either whinge or moan or, or you can, you know, um, be bitter or better. So I've always chosen to try and be better. You know, and if someone says no, I'm always already thinking, I okay, go, okay, well, what can I do? Yep. Um, so I never accept no. I had this local club called um, Spotswood Footy Club. The coach rang me up and said, look, I'm, I'm going to stand down next year. I think you should go for the job. But um, I thought, well, if I don't put my CV in, nothing will ever change. But I thought, I know I'm not going to get it, but I'll put my CV in and at least force a conversation at a board level that uh, a female potentially could coach. Yeah. And while I knew it wasn't going to happen for me, if I don't start that conversation, it's not going to happen for other people following me. So, you know, I put my CV in knowing I wasn't going to get the job, but let's let's create the conversation. So uh, from spending a year and a half at Western Jets, I did a coaching course and that was, um, it was a five day living course. Yeah. Um, I was the only female. Everyone else were AFL players or AFL assistant coaches. That's where I met Gary Ayres. And, uh, you know, from then he was obviously, uh, we created a bit of a connection and then a job came up at uh, his club. The, I had to give up coaching at Port Melbourne because basically I need to go back to full time work and earn some decent money yeah. um, to raise a family. And when I gave up coaching at Port Melbourne, it was a really hard decision because I kind of felt I'd gone as far as I could go, um, you know, and I was knocking on a lot of AFL doors and I was having conversations, but there was a, a fair bit of, I guess, lip service back then. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just thought that that's it, you know, I have to walk away. And so, and funnily enough, the AFL was doing a, a video on me on almost the same time that I decided to, to pull the pin and Sam Lane saw that video. And it was quite a raw emotional video. and. Uh, you know, she said to me, you know, uh, we need to tell that story. Yeah. So then you got the job as the first ever female coach in the male space. Yeah. How did that, how did that end up happening? So Sam's put out this story. Was there then people reaching out? I, I chose Seaford basically because I felt that um, the club really wanted me there. And for it to work, I needed to know that that was genuine yeah. um, and I was being employed for the right reasons. So. That's why I ended up choosing St Kilda. Uh, yeah, and as, as soon as the women's league was introduced, was it something that you knew you wanted to be a part of as a coach? Well, actually, uh, I was really excited for the, the women's league um, and not thinking I was ever going to be involved in it because I was in the men's area and yeah. I was really enjoying my time there. Yeah. But uh, I remember the first uh, year, I was just, you know, a lot of the girls running around, Daisy, Loz, Elise, Asta, most of the leaders were in our own clubs. So to, to see them running around and, and not just play the game the way they are, but um, just the way they handled themselves in the media and, and represented women as a whole was just, you know, it was just a massive amount, amount of, of pride from me to, to watch that first year. But, um, you know, the first year of coaching the Southern Saints, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't have enjoyed coaching as much as I have for a long period of time. So it was like, you know, I really, the women have really re reunited my passion for coaching um, and, and for growing, you know, AFLW. Yeah. And now, next year, I mean, it's all getting really close now. Yeah. We've got the fixture out today and it's becoming a reality. You're going to be an AFLW coach. One thing that I know that you talk about or it's talked about a lot is that you're the only female in the league and now in its fourth year. Obviously, Beck Goddard was um, in Adelaide, but she moved on. Um, how, does that, how does that make you feel? So we're four years into a competition for women and there's only one female head coach. Yeah. Personally, I find it a bit frustrating. Um, you know, it's, it's quite accepted, I guess, for you know, men to coach women's team, but not women's to coach male sides. Um, I think it's sad that 
both Beck and Michelle are no longer involved in, in coaching at that level. Um, and I think it speaks a lot about the difficultiness of it around, you know, and different people have different barriers. Um, you know, my barriers would be slightly different to Beck's to slightly different to Michelle's. But there is out, without a doubt that men have less barriers to, to overcome um, to be able to do that type of work um, over a long period of time. And you kind of need to do it over a long period of time to get credits yes. to make sure that you're good enough to do it. So, you know, to be able to invest at slightly lower levels for four or five years to be able to get yourself to that air, to that level, women don't quite have that flexibility to do that. Yeah. And finally, how do you think we're going to go next year? Are you excited? What, what are you most excited about? Uh, I'm most excited about um, watching, I guess, you know, probably before the first game, you know, just watching the way you all go about it and put on the Saints jumper and, you know, I can sense the amount of pride that, you know, it's going to be worn with and just the way that, you know, you're already the connection that you all have together and, and then when you run out on that, you know, the Moorabbin Oval, um, just showcasing, you know, showcasing your attributes, your skills um, and, and I guess, you know, this Brighton community, Moorabbin community and all along the peninsula, just watching them fall in love with you guys as, as people and as players and, and come along your journey. Do you think you'll get a bit emotional or nah, oh, not sure. anymore? No, <laughs> <laughs> no um, that, that first night, at, or the first Sunday uh, at Moorabbin is going to be extremely emotional. So, yeah. yeah, I might have to take a bit of a chill pill somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to deny it. It's going to be emotional, but, yeah. um, you know, uh, look, I think it'll be emotional for many people. Yeah. Um, and that's footy. Um, to, th to think that it's not emotional and try and suppress that, I think, is, is taking away something special about the game. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, well, thanks so much for joining us today. And it's great to hear your story. And can't wait to get started and to play under you as a coach. Thank you. Thanks.